Hey Zelda fans, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to get into some Tears of the Kingdom lore. When Breath of the Wild released, I made a video covering the Zora Stone Monuments. With these, King Dorfan was able to preserve the history of the Zora for generations. Sadly, the monuments fell into decay around the time of Breath of the Wild. Between Breath and Tears, King Dorfan instructed Prince Sidon to renovate the monuments, writing over his father's words with his own. Together, let's discover the learnings of the Zora as told by Prince Sidon. If you enjoy this sort of thing, I'll be making more videos like this soon, so please leave a like and subscribe to stay in the loop. Learnings of the Zora, Part 1, The Waters of Zora's Domain Long, long ago, right here in Lanayru, incredible transformations, both subtle and drastic in nature, shaped the land. The tall mountains birthed clouds, these clouds cried tears of rain, and this rain filled our deep valleys past the brim. In time, this overflowing water became the Zora River, which bred waterfalls that fell and nourished the vast linear wetlands. Perhaps it was inevitable that my Zora ancestors, who wandered in search of precious water, would finally settle here. The mountains of Linaru are blessed with high-quality stone. The structures built from said stone are solid yet refined. Just like the Zora in our domain, our buildings exist in harmony with the water. It is a beautiful symbol of our way of life. If you go to the edge of the domain, close your eyes, and listen closely, you shall be greeted by the gentle sound of water. This kind, soothing sound is a testament to the happy life the Zora are so grateful to have found here. As one born of royal Zora blood, my duty is as clear as it is unshakable. I, Sidon, swear here and now, I shall protect our home with my very life, that the gentle sound of water may never cease in our beloved domain. Learnings of the Zora, Part 2, The Legend of Verudo, Our Great Ancestor It is written that long ago, there was a strong-willed Zora princess who was as meandering as a winding river. This princess, who was dearly loved by her fellow Zora, was as noble as she was innocent. Her name was Ruto. One day, a powerful and wicked man tried to take over Hyrule and brought great ruin to the once peaceful Zora's domain. Our tales speak of fallen Zora soldiers drifting down the river as it sadly reflected the chaotic retreat of the terrified Zora. Princess Ruto bravely fought back her tears as she bore witness to the tragic misery unfolding in the domain. Even amid her heartbreak, the Zora princess did all she could to help the weak and elderly escape. Next, she swam against the river's current and climbed the mighty waterfall to challenge her foe. The details of this fight have fallen victim to the haze of time. Few details remain. Still, it is said that she was aided by the princess of Hyrule and the hero of legend, and together they saved Hyrule. So the legend goes. I, Sidon, prince of the Zora, cannot help but ponder these events as I listen to the Zora children play in all their innocence. As Princess Rudo's descendant, it is my fate to carry the torch of her brave axe into tomorrow and beyond. I shall not fail. Learnings of the Zora, Part 3, The Great King Dorfan Several springs after I lost my dear sister, Mipha, a large group of Lizalfos attacked the domain. It mattered not that this was my first true battle, the expectations of those around me weighed heavy on my shoulders. The absence of Mipha, who had always been there to encourage me with loving kindness, was like a spear to the heart. As for my own spear, though I was highly trained for its use, it seemed to only cut the air and slash the water's surface. I was taken off guard by a surprise attack from three Lizalfos hiding at the water's edge, each with their blade fixed on me. I knew that my time had come and that is when the three Lizalfos disappeared as quickly as they had arrived. In their place, I saw the towering figure of my father, the great King Dorfan, who had just bested my foes with ease. Sidon, my son, he said firmly. You allowed your heart to falter. That is the quickest way to fall on the battlefield. His words cut deep, but as I stood on the brink of despair, a familiar voice gently encouraged me. Your king needs you. Many soldiers later attested that they were certain they had also heard the sweet voice of Mipha on that day. 
From then on, my heart was true and my resolve firm. By lending strength to our king, we were able to save the domain. Learnings of the Zora, Part 4, Two Sisters of Different Blood When I was young, I had an irrational fear of strangers. I was particularly bashful around Yona, paralyzed even. She was already so mature in manner, and she treated me like a little brother, even though we were not related. There came an unseasonably heavy rain that quickly flooded the river. Us children, who were playing there, were swept away. I was battered by the water's strong flow, my fins helpless to resist. It was Yona who dragged me to the safety of the shore. The water continued to swell as the shore waned, but Yona was unflappable, sweetly comforting me as I shivered in fear. It was Mipha, my dear sister, who finally showed up to rescue us with other Zora adults in tow. I still remember Yona's face as she gazed up at Mipha in admiration. My face must have looked the same as I gazed at Yona. As a child, I had two big sisters, one by birth and one by chance. Yona looked up to Mipha, and I was in awe of them both. Before I knew it, years had passed, and my feelings for Yona became more difficult to quantify. Then, one day, my father informed me that the amazing young woman, who had once been like a sister to me, was to be my bride. Perhaps these feelings and memories are too dear and private to commit to history, but such is the tale of this Zora Prince. Learnings of the Zora, Part 5, The Zora Armor She Left Behind For some time after I lost my beloved sister, even the light shining on the water seemed dark and dreary to my eyes. But as they say, time heals all wounds, no matter how deep. I can now speak of her with a smile, as is only fitting. I shall now tell the tale of the Zora armor that my sister crafted for her future husband, as per our ancient custom. One dark day, the domain was in great peril, and I sought help from a traveling Hylian to save our home. He was sparing with his words, yet I trusted him at once. As fate would have it, he was a childhood friend of Mipha's. My father, King Dorfan, Troubled by the domain's suffering, requested his help. The swordsman agreed without hesitation. Father bequeathed my sister Zora armor to this courageous soul, along with her hope for the safety of the domain. The armor fit Link perfectly, so perfectly that Councilman Muzu, who then harbored a hatred of Hylians, could not object. My sister had already left this world, and with her went the dearly held intentions she had instilled in that special armor. Yet, with Link's help, she shined a light on the Zora in our hour of need, reaching between worlds with gentle fingertips. Learnings of the Zora, Part 6, The Story of Mipha Court, The Beginning There was once a terrifying monster on Ploymus Mountain, loosing shock arrows on all who dared to cross its path. It was of utmost importance to drive the beast away, but as the Zora are weak to electricity, our efforts were futile. This is when a lone Hylian arrived at the domain. This swordsman, who was sparing with his words, his name was Link. Unlike us Zora, he was immune to shocks. Well, perhaps this is an exaggeration, but one thing is certain, he was very brave. After careful preparation, he ascended Ploymus Mountain and defeated the foul beast all by himself. As if in celebration of the newfound peace, Clean water mysteriously began flowing at the top of Ploymus Mountain. That is when many Zora, if not most, voiced support for building a place that all could enjoy in that formerly frightful spot. Yet the many tree roots and stones made this task tricky, leading to a focus on the no less difficult matter of the name. Zora Park was too obvious. Ploymus Park only conjured images of the former terrors found there. When I candidly asked whether we should focus on the hard work at hand rather than the name, they all turned my way. Prince Sidon, they asked. Surely you must have a good suggestion. To that, I fell silent and stayed so for a long while. Learnings of the Zora, Part 6, The Story of Mipha Court, The Conclusion. When posed with the task of naming this storied location, I, Prince Sidon, fell silent. 
After a time, I timidly proposed the one and only name that came to mind for this place of newfound peace. I suggested that we name it after my beloved sister, who had long been lost to us, Mifa Court. I worried they would think I was unfairly favoring my family's legacy by naming it after my kin. A hush fell over the group. After a time, one of the stone masons raised his voice in agreement. More voices joined his, one after another. The idea was embraced wholly, and the craftsmen all returned to their work. Though the work was grueling, from then until the completion of Mipha Court, the air was filled with laughter and singing. This incident drove home to my very core how much everyone loved my sister. I hope one day to inspire such admiration. If there is ever to be a side on court, I must work tirelessly to earn that honor. Learnings of the Zora, Part 7, The Prince and the Swordsman The rain always stops, except when it does not. This humorous saying was once repeated with a soft chuckle around here. Then, one day, heavy rain started falling in the domain, and no matter how many days passed, it did not cease. Although the Zora are a water-dwelling sort, we came to miss the warmth of the sun and the dry winds upon our backs. Alas, as fervent as our desire was, we had no means of stopping the cause of this unprecedented disaster. When we had all given up hope, I, Sidon, took it upon myself to invite a Hylian to the domain. This young swordsman of few words was named Link. I trusted him at once, sensing great devotion in his kind eyes. It was immediately clear that my instincts were correct. Thanks to Link, we were able to face the threat head on. Our battle with the source of the disaster was intense, but my newfound friend and I refused to yield until we finally triumphed. Sometimes, written words flow so much more readily than those spoken. Link, my dearest friend, you are an unparalleled swordsman, and I admire you so very much. He may lack fins and gills, but it matters not. This hero among heroes exudes magnificence tempered with steadiness. Though we are different, our hearts both yearn to serve a higher calling. I learned much from him and am eternally grateful. As I recall my best friend, it occurs to me that though the rains have ceased, perhaps a true adventure never does. Learnings of the Zora, Part 8, The Princess of Hyrule Once that despicable disaster had ceased to plague Zora's domain, a distinguished yet humble lady paid us a visit. This young woman, who appeared with Link at her side, was none other Princess Zelda of the royal family of Hyrule. I beg forgiveness, she said earnestly. Because of the royal family, Princess Mipha, she paused, unable to continue. Small, silent teardrops tumbled down her cheek and hit the floor, one after another, each saying a thousand unspoken words. She gently wiped her eyes and lifted her gaze to meet the kings, speaking kind words of gratitude for Mipha's sacrifice. We knew well that what had transpired was a result of a decision shared by the Zora and by Princess Mipha herself. There was no need for the Princess of Hyrule's apology, and even less for her sorrow. King Dorfan, along with the rest of the Zora, were moved by the depths of Princess Zelda's sincerity. She had held that unthinkable disaster at bay for nearly 100 years with nothing more than the sheer force of her own will. Yet she was not prideful. She dutifully set to work, traveling across Hyrule to secure cooperation for the kingdom's restoration. She was adored by all, yet so humble. She possessed an inner strength that shone like a star in the night sky. I used to think that inner strength could be forged by building physical strength. But now, I am not so certain. I feel a strong calling to one day acquire the same sort of strength within myself. Learnings of the Zora, Anecdote 1, The Solid Water and the Fluid Spear The Zora are not associated with water because of our dwelling place alone. We each, also, to varying extents, possess the ability to actually manipulate water. We use this gift for many purposes. We use it to swim faster, 
to achieve mighty leaps from the waves below, to gather fish, and so much more. For me, the true awakening of this ability that many of my childhood chums already possessed came upon me quite suddenly. One day, as I was training at Veiled Falls, the rain slickened my grasp, causing me to drop my spear. I reached to grab it, but it was already too far away. Soon it would fall to the bottom of the cliff, never to be seen again. I knew that I must take hold of it, and at that moment, droplets created a stream extending from my outreached hand. The water stream twisted and turned until it finally took hold of my falling spear and deftly returned it to my grasp. In that moment, the water was solid and my spear fluid. This sensation forever changed my approach to spear play. I was reminded of how my sister Mifa described it, and everything clicked. Water and spear became as one. Gaining yet another layer of admiration for my dear sister, I devoted myself to my spear training from then on. Learnings of the Zora, Anecdote 2, The Great Task Entrusted to Me I, Sidon, was entrusted with the great task of renovating the Zora stone monuments that had fallen to ruin. There are 11 stone monuments total found in and around Zora's domain, including the one you are now reading. The former text written by my father, King Dorfan, could not be salvaged, and so sadly it had to be replaced. Despite my royal blood, whispers abound that it is improper for someone my age to write over the king's glorious words. Ah, but do they not realize that it was King Dorfan himself who ordered me to undertake this restoration project? Father says it's not set in stone that I shall be the one to inherit the throne, as it is not a matter of blood alone. If we ask the eternal skies above whether I am fit to rule, they shall remain silent, and so we must look to our fellow Zora. He urged me to use these monuments to share my learnings and speak to our people straight from my heart. Father is older and wiser than I. His sage advice is a gift. As such, I have inscribed my thoughts upon these eleven stones. I do not know how far-reaching my words shall be, but it is my hope that they will reach whoever needs to hear them most. Until one of my descendants writes over my musings many years from now, I pray they resonate with whoever reads them. And that's every stone monument in Tears of the Kingdom. We still have so much to learn about Hyrule's vast history. Which one piqued your interest the most? I'm rather fond of Anecdote 1. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're there, tell me if you enjoyed today's video and if you'd like to see more just like it. Thanks for watching, have a fantastic rest of your day, RMFH out.